Welcome to another video in which I respond to a few social media questions about intermittent fasting. I have to point out that this is my current perspective, which is non generalizable and subjective to change in the future as I experiment with uh, different protocols and arguments that are contrary to mine. So the first question, I love dairy products. I heard that if you consume too much, then it can push you out of ketosis. Is this true? Well, I guess it depends from person to person. First of all, it depends on the level of carbohydrate you are able to consume and maintain ketosis. That is basically your tolerance level. Then it's about the total carbohydrate that you have in a day. So let's say that you drink a glass of milk, which is about eight to nine grams of carbs. Uh, if you do that, and if you are lactose tolerant, and if the rest of the carbohydrate you consume from for the day comes mainly from vegetables, um, I would say you're likely to remain ketotic. But individual differences are important here, uh, especially genetic and metabolic. It's always safe to say that one should experiment and see how it works for uh, themselves. In this case, uh, drink milk or consume dairy, quantify how much you're having, take account of the overall caloric and carbohydrate intake for the day and measure ketones. Observe and adjust if you, if you prefer consuming dairy products. Now, another question from the same person. Secondly, I usually survive the first day or two of eating low carb, then I get massive carb cravings. I literally become the cookie carb monster. Is there a strategy to overcome this? So this is basically another very broad one for which I cannot be um, specific. What I could say, though, is that the bacteria in your gut can be somewhat reflective of your diet. So if you're used to eating a lot of refined foods, you may be feeding a certain type or family of bacteria which could predominate in your gut. Now, the existing evidence about this still begs a lot of questions, at least to me. I could say it's also um, the whole idea of carb, crave, carb cravings is also a matter of habit. So if you force yourself to consume two or three additional big servings of vegetables every day for a couple of weeks, you may not only have improved your diet, but you could also be able to influence the predominance um, of bacteria in your gut, possibly favoring the prevalence of more beneficial or uh, these are called commensal bacteria. I hope this helps. Now, moving on, another question from someone else. For weight loss, what's the best window or it doesn't matter? Now, I guess you're talking about the feeding and fasting windows. From my personal experience and for uh, my specific case, it seems not to matter. I've experimented with different variations, eating only during the first part of the day, eating only during the second part of the day and in the evening, um, having my feeding window concentrated for the midday. And to be honest, I haven't noticed subjective or easily quantifiable differences like uh, weight variations uh, on the scale day by day. Um, so once again, this solely applies to me and I'm kind of very active during most days. But if you think of it, people of uh, different ages with different metabolic and genetic profiles, may respond differently to uh, different feeding windows. Uh, according to some research in circadian biology, there could be a tendency for people 
in general to be more insulin sensitive during the first part of the day which could mean to focus your feeding window in that time frame i'd recommend uh, looking that up next question once fat adapted do we actually have to concern ourselves with bmr lowering that is basal metabolic rate as may happen in traditional calorie deficit dieting my assumption is that once fat adapted we're capable of tapping into fat stores much more efficiently so a caloric deficit wouldn't affect us in the same way end of question well <laughs> i guess that's an assumption you will hear a lot of people in favor of low carbohydrate and ketogenic diets using this type of argument um, but i wouldn't be convinced or i wouldn't use it as my mantra were i on a weight loss progression i would be more concerned with better and more accurate tracking of calories in and observing how it affects my weight loss progress and i guess the same advice goes for weight maintenance um, our metabolism and our overall daily energy picture if i can put it that way these are extremely adaptable so even making estimations like this could be inaccurate we just don't know exactly, which is why it's always better to personally measure, observe and adjust rather than uh, taking someone else's arguments and guesses and going with them. All right, that's it for this Q&A. If you have similar questions, make sure to leave them below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.